Hey guys, welcome to Eat Rave Recipe with me, Simon Atkins. And me, Pitts Taylor. Today we are joined by an author, a chef, and an all round foodie. He's also founder of online food platform Mob Kitchen. Please welcome Ben Levis. Woohoo! Thanks again, buddy. Yay! Oh, we're cheering for you. Yeah, we're you cheering. Know what? We're so excited to have you on because Thank you we're so much. massive foodies. And uh, you've just brought out a cookbook. Yes. Among loads of other things. Yes, yeah, so it is, uh, it's publishing on the 4th of July and it is our vegetarian cookbook. Uh, follows after our first cookbook, which was just lots of meat recipes. Uh, now we're focusing veggies, 60 recipes, all feeding four for under a tenner. Um, so yeah, super exciting. It is such a brilliant concept that you've come up with in terms of like feeding four for under a tenner. But where did the Mob Kitchen start? Uh, so I was at university and I've always been a real foodie. My dad ran an Italian restaurant for 15 years. Um, so cooking pasta dishes and salads at the weekends was something I always did and felt comfortable with. And uh, when I got to university, I quickly saw that lots of my mates didn't share that same comfort in the kitchen. They were cooking pesto pasta and bacon sarnies five nights a week. Yeah, and yeah. probably yeah. stuff that's depressing. like not healthy for yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that has none of your five as yeah. a Hot noodles. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I wanted to create a platform that students and young professionals felt was, you know, their own. I basically wanted to create some video content that would be captivating and exciting and launch the channel in October 2016. And it's done so well. It's been going for so two and a half years, but you guys are now in your own studios. What kind of recipes can we expect from this book? And just, you know, and your favorite stuff to cook. It's like realistic, good, healthy-ish foods. Um, lots of gnocchis, delicious gnocchis, bakes. She uh, loves a gnocchi. Yeah. <laughs> Parmigianas. Um, we do lots of nice pastas, even though we were quite careful at the beginning to, you know, not overrun the channel with pasta because we wanted to show students that, you know, they could get creative and get cooking without having to put pasta in every single meal. We're really upping our vegetarian and vegan output. Uh, so, you know, students and young professionals feel that they've got lots yeah. of options if they want to give it a go. But a lot of people don't know how to cook and no. they don't even know where to start. Exactly. And that, you know, that idea exactly of, um, of you know, group of, group of guys coming together at the end of the day, sharing a meal, um, you know, talking about the ups and downs of the day. It's so important. Yeah. And yeah, you know, hopefully what we try and do with Mob is, you know, equip them with recipes that allows them to do that. You guys started off two and a half years and you guys seem to be doing so much. How do you go about growing a business like that? Is it like really quite hard at the beginning? And, and, and what was the, the process like behind it for you guys? Oh my God, at the beginning it was uh, impossible. I very naively thought after we shot the first, so we shot the first 20 videos in one batch and I, and I thought if I upload these, they're genius. If I upload these, they're gonna have a million followers overnight, which obviously wasn't the case. So, so I uploaded them and we had about, you know, we, my friends were amazing spreading the words. A, f a small following grew around, I don't know, 5,000 people. So I had to try all of these ridiculous ways to get the word out there. I, I, What's the most ridiculous thing that you tried? Um, I became a delivery rider and was hiding mob kitchen flies in pizza boxes. No I way. Stood outside. That's quite Did they cheeky. find out? Uh, who? Delivery? Uh, no, no, they didn't. <laughs> We've actually partnered with them since. So, uh, <laughs> yes, yeah. I love that. Um, we, I used to stand outside the local Sainsbury's handing people mob kitchen recipes, hoping that they'd go in and buy the ingredients and cook them. Um, Messaged all my matches on Tinder, asking if they'd check out the page. Not sure how much good that did. I love um, that. So, yeah, I, mean, I don't know. I literally tried everything. And then, and then actually, my best mate was working at a, I won't name the brand, but he was working at this food brand. And they have one of those media lists with like 700. This is really not GDR, GDPR. This is, like, oh, yes. Yeah. This he sent me one of those media lists with like 700 email addresses of right. every food Same. journalist in, in England. And I, um, and I dumped an email on all of them saying, please write something on Mob Kitchen. And the Mail Online and the Evening Standard were like, yeah, we'll Did do they? a piece on you, yeah. That's so you know what, mate? good. You've got to be a hustler. Yeah, 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 yeah. I am impressed he with hustles. the hustling skills. Um, yeah, you got, you've got to do it, though. You've got to try all those different ways. And because it really doesn't, you, some people do get a lucky break and they get one video that goes viral and suddenly their account yeah. will take off. That didn't happen to me. Um, so but just you have, hard graft yeah, and perseverance gonna, yeah. is kind of like what gets you. I, yeah. Gets you to stop. Do you practice what you preach? Do you kind of <laughs> eat the meals and cook the meals God. that you um, are, you know, kind of that are in your book and that you're telling um, kind of students to eat? Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
official answer. Um, <laughs> if you spoke to my girlfriend about that, she'd definitely go against the official line. What I love making is like a really quick little like salad, maybe quick steamed salmon in our, in our first cookbook. My dad's speciality that he cooked for us when we were growing up was ginger and soy steamed salmon, which you just Yummy. whack mm. it into a tray, cover it in tin foil, put it in the oven, and it's love delicious it. and flaky and fragrant. And, you know, it's very, very quick. So I love, you know, super quick, easy recipes to put together. And when you're knackered at the end of the day and you've been cooking all day, it's yeah. like, do you want to get back in the kitchen? Exactly. Well, I know it's, well, it's really difficult. And for me personally, you know, if I've been in the kitchen all day, maybe not. But, you know, I think definitely if you've been working in the library, you've been cooped up in the office all day, it is yeah. quite nice to get back and get some tunes on and, um, you know, get your mates into the kitchen and cook a nice dish. No, that's, that's just, that's not my vibe. It's, it's, it's absolutely, it's totally so mine. That's your vibe is yeah. to, like, after a busy day to go home and cook. My vibe is to, like, go home, be able to have something that's delicious and nutritious, but I don't need a lot of time and don't put a lot of time and effort into it. Okay. And then I can, like, just chill out for the rest of the evening. Well... What would I be cooking? What should I be cooking that's um, easy but delicious? Well, this is... Well, the publisher will forgive me. Uh, we've, <laughs> I've just signed down on another book deal. Um, and uh, the, the title of the book is going to be 12 Minute Dinners. Oh. Um, and every, we're in the process of testing the recipes. Um, if me and the team can't cook them in under 10 minutes, we're not wow. going to put them in the book. So we wow. really want to stick true to that title. I know, again, as much as I love Jamie, I know a lot of kind of common feedback with his... 15 minute meals and 30 minute meals, as everyone was like, there's no way. You could they, do it in. I yeah. cooked a lot of those and uh, they do take much longer because also you've got everything there that's already prepped to just chuck yeah, in. Yeah, but exactly. Actually, it's, it's, it, I find it a bit of a slog doing all the chopping and like yeah. I, I really enjoy the creative side. Yeah, yeah. And I basically take a recipe and sort of like, you know, take it as guidance. Whereas like my other yeah, half will follow it as a, I'm off piste yeah. and he's I'm always off menu, off piste yeah. and he's like Even when like, you're ordering in a Bible. restaurant, you yeah. are like literally, she's never on piste with food. <laughs> but just, can you just tell me, just give me two, two recipes, yes. two or three recipes um, that I can do that it's just quite quick okay, and then I can just so get to Netflix. Carbonara, <laughs> carbonara, yeah. Mob Kitchen carbonara. So you literally whack the pasta in the pan, then you get a frying pan on the heat, put in some... Um, smoke bacon, cook it till it's crispy, add some garlic while that's frying in a bowl you crack, you just put six egg yolks, a bit of parmesan, a lot of black pepper, beat it all together, when the pasta's done, chuck it in with the bacon, then add the beaten egg okay, yolks, sounds... toss it all together with a pasta water and create the little... In the there we go, there we go, there we go, we go, we're in the market. And there you go, that is, the, that is like a really, really good, quick, easy carbonara. Um, and you know, most, this is what I'm sort of wanting to say in the book, most pasta dishes, most gnocchi dishes, couscous, if you're, if you're thinking about it in those ways, actually they don't take very long to cook okay. at all. Um, and, you know, it obviously helps if you've got some nice ingredients kicking about in the kitchen, so. Yeah, and what, so what happens, say for example, you're gonna have a night out, you've got people over for dinner, what are you cooking? So I guess a couple of rules I have in the back of my head, if everyone's thinking we're gonna wanna go out, I try and stick away from anything that's very garlicky, uh, anything that's very oniony, I wanna do something that's like nice and light and fresh. Um, you don't want that garlic breath when you're snogging someone. No <laughs> way, no way. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Dragon yeah. breath. Whereas I um, like a whole thing yeah. of garlic. And actually, well. again, something I hate as well is, you know, when like you're standing next to someone and they smell of like cooked Oh bacon. my God. <laughs> I can't do that. Or like that. They've, they've literally cooked their um, their meal in the same clothes yeah, they're going out yeah, in yeah. and they stink. It's, it's a real yeah. problem Worse. when you are cooking, especially in a small space, and let's be honest, in a small kitchen in London, yeah. that if you obviously you've got ventilators, but you do stink afterwards. That's true. If it's like a steak or whatever you're rustling up. Yeah. No, but like, just, just put your going out clothes in the bedroom and lock them in, babe. Yeah. <laughs> or yeah. have a shower after your dinner, do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <You're here. laughs> um, okay, well, that being said, I think probably my favourite dish to eat before going out would be a, uh, we do this kind of like Thai steak salad. Ooh. So you Ooh, yes. just grill a steak really lightly on either side. You could maybe whack it in the oven to get rid of the smell if you're really that conscious okay. about it. Um, but anyway, you grill it um, for a couple of minutes on either side so it's nice and medium rare. Slice it up, add it into a bowl with some watermelon, uh, some sliced peppers, some, just some normal kind of like romaine lettuce. And then the dressing is key. Ooh. You need, oh, and some cucumber as okay. well. And in the dressing, you need um, olive oil, yeah. sesame oil, fish sauce. Okay, this um, is a bit some, in, Yeah, it? exactly. Some ginger. 
uh, lots of lime juice. And then, Delicious. yeah, you whack it in with some mint leaves. And, yeah, it's just very fresh. And Fragrant. also, it's, it's kind of like, Fragrant, it's yeah. nice, though, as well, before the night out. I mean, I exactly. cannot be stomach in a bowl of pasta no. before a night curry. out. I'm kind of like... See, that's what I do before a night out. I'm like, really? I load, yeah. Protein. Wow. Yeah. I mean, if I can, I have, like, curry and pasta for breakfast. It's like... Mm. I, it's, I have bad habits. But, I mean, it's, I really enjoy food and I like and love cooking it. Food-wise, we know what you're, what you're eating, but what are you drinking? And what are you... Are you serving to your, um, yes. to your, to your guests that you have over? For the ultimate, like, pre-night dinner party. Yeah. Um, I am, I'm a massive orange juice fan. Are you? Uh, yeah, I drink about, I've had to slow down a bit because I've been having some, like, my stomach, I think, is almost like reacting to the acids. Acid. Um, no. But I, I normally drink, like, about a, a litre of orange juice every day. But, like, so when you're drinking orange juice, is it, like, fresh, freshly squeezed? Well, yeah, it's just the, the same, you know, the Sainsbury's freshly squeezed one. It's yeah. very good. Okay, so it's not yeah. freshly squeezed yeah. from the mob kitchen. No, 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 no. <laughs> That's expensive. Yeah. Do you, are, you, are you a boozer? Do you drink? Yeah, yeah. so um, probably my, um, I would say my, like, go-to drink before a night out would be freshly squeezed orange juice, mm. vodka, and, mm. yeah, maybe some soda water. So soda water So kind of vodka. like a screwdriver, but Oh, busy. right. I That's would never have so thought to put orange Jesus juice in any of my cocktails. <laughs> and when you're like cooking or, you know, when you're like sort of in the kitchen, do you ever have a little bit of a kitchen rave? Yes, um, definitely. And I guess I, I, I actually can't cook without listening to music. I find it really like eerie and uh, weird. So I yeah, love. there are always tunes on. And in this book and in the last book, every single, uh, every single recipe has a Spotify codes underneath it That's which you can scan so clever and, yeah you know at the beginning of the channel uh when we first launched it uh we needed to find music for our videos and we uh asked or i asked um friends who were in bands if we could use their tracks and they said yes and the videos with music from you know bands and musicians did really really well and i think maybe tapped into something where people could kind of relate with the dish more yeah. um, and kind of imagine themselves cooking it. I don't know, that's what I like to think. Um, and, and so, yeah, we kind of carried on, you know, teaming up with different bands and musicians, and that's a massive part of the platform. We're constantly reaching out to bands and musicians. We're kind of in constant really? talks with yeah. management companies and, um, you know, record labels who send us their new up-and-coming acts and say, can we use it? And, and what comes first? Is it always the recipe and then the music? Or do sometimes you listen to a song and you're like, hang on a minute, this Beef. needs a recipe? <laughs> um, yeah. I would, I would say probably the recipe, but you know, definitely you know, when we're listening to music in the studio, it gets us all kind of riled up and going. And so, yeah, it probably gets the creative juices flowing. I'm just trying to think what kind of music I would like to listen to with like a spag ball. Is Ooh. it like Deep House? No, or is I, it more like it? Like Miles Davis. <laughs> yeah, I was, was going to say, yeah. or like Soul. Oh, yeah. Or like okay. some kind of like old, like some Soul. Okay, mm. and what about like a nice fresh salad, chicken salad, what are you listening to? Ooh. What are you listening to? Chicken salad sounds a bit boring for <laughs> <to> me. <Yeah. laughs> um. What is your idea of a, a great night out? Are you a clubber? Are you a raver? Are you more kind of I like don't you know, think a I... late bar? I mean, I love like going out, out. Techno is my uh, really, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah. <laughs> we love a bit of techno here, don't we? I'm, I'm uh, a massive techno heads. Yeah, no. So I guess that is that's when I want to go like ah. Uh, uh. um, <laughs> the where are you going? I think I don't know. Well, when I was up in Edinburgh Sub Club in Glasgow, they get some amazing techno acts. Um, in summer, I go to Ibiza. I don't know for the last few years with my mates. So a couple of big okay. nights there. Yeah. DC Ten. Yeah. Um, oh DC favorite. Ten Monday nights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Cannot a biggie. beat it. It's the best. <laughs> um, this is the situation, Benny. You're quite boozed up. Yeah. The nightclub, the bar, the bar, everything. It's all shut. You're on your way home. Do you get a dirty kebab? Uh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a Donna Kebab you fan. You are? Yeah, 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 yeah. And actually, Mob does their our very <laughs> own homemade Donna Kebab. No Do way! You? Yeah. Um, and it's actually very easy. You just make a kind of like big clump of uh, spiced lamb mince and wrap it in a, wrap it in some tin foil and whack it in the oven. And are you doing that after yeah. a night out? Exactly. No, 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 Are you going to the kebab shop? You're like, all right, guys, going to rustle up in the <laughs> kitchen, down a kebab at five o'clock in the morning. <laughs> definitely not. Uh, we are. I, I am definitely buying one from from the local babby, but um, it is our most popular ever recipe, which I think says a lot really? about the English population.
Absolutely. Is it easy to make? It is very easy to make. You just whack, uh, wrap it up and whack it in the oven and then, you know, do the classic hacking yeah. it down. Hack it down. Nice strips of donut. Oh. What are you eating the following day um, to make sure that you are comforting yourself and giving yourself a big hug yeah, <laughs> as yeah. much as possible? Um, pasta is my, yeah. my ultimate comfort food. So um, a, a matrusiana, which is Ooh. just bacon, garlic, then a couple of tins of tomatoes, spaghetti or penne or whatever you've got lying around, lots of chili. I like having something spicy the, the day yeah, after, yeah. kind of sweat it out a bit. I love that that's your pasta go-to dish. That's mine's exactly the same, but without the bacon. But I'm going to try the bacon. It's like well, just a normal really spice. spicy tomato really? sauce. Yeah, nice. it's and with loads of garlic mm. and loads of cheese. It's like super stringy. Beautiful. Um, mm. And if you're not eating pasta, would you ever go for like a curry? Do you cook like Thais or Indians or anything like that? Yeah, we do. I get. Um, I mean, we've got curry recipes. I mean, I'm I, I'm not going to you know big up the mob recipes too much here because I actually don't, I think it's very difficult to reach that level of curry that you get at an actual curry house at home. For some reason, it just never quite hits that mark. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Speak no, I do, I do. Really? <laughs> no, I, do. I, know, I shouldn't I, be saying this. But um, I know exactly what you mean because... It never quite... No, there's, there's something, always just something missing. Yeah. Either like it doesn't have the, the, the right amount of spices yeah. or like... They use, the they use a ghee too weak in, or something. They use ghee, which is clarified yeah. butter, and they use that in basically every Everything. single curry you you know that you'll get at a at a restaurant. And you know you're obviously not cooking with ghee when you're at home. Ha what else do you do to kind of look after yourself? Uh, on a hangover. On a hangover and sort of day to day. I so on a hangover, if I can ever muster the energy, I will try and go to the gym or go for a run. <gasps> Yes, yeah. no. thank you. And we're Damn. so, and also, I know I, I definitely don't do that that regularly. Um, but if you can ever muster just enough energy to just get out and go for a run, you feel so much don't better. You? Yeah, your yeah, endorphins yeah. are like flowing. I mean, you might puke along the way, but exactly. hey, you feel better. Yeah, <laughs> but that, I can't deal yeah. with that. No, exactly. Are you, are, do you kind of listen to music when you're hungover and you're like, you know, feeling sorry for yourself? Uh, yeah, lots. What's, what kind of What's music? What's cheering you What's up? What's your hungover track list my, like? my guy that I'm obsessed with right now is called Flamingosis. Oh, I've I do you not ever heard of him? No. You don't know? No, I don't know. So you're the music curator. Yeah. Babe, this is like the first time that I do not know, but I'm also not going to be lying, like, yeah, I know this. Yeah, I know. Yeah. It is a, so what kind, of, what kind of sound? It's just I like think. kind of like jazzy, but with like a nice beat. And he's he's quite a young guy, but he's got a, um, he's got a big following and we reached out to him recently and just, you know, sent him a DM and said, can we right. use your tracks in our Sliding food Sliding into the DM. Yeah. Slid in hard. <laughs> and, uh, and he came back to us and he was like, yeah, go for it. So I, I really, really like him. Um, and then, but in the gym, I love listening to something like, I love listening to just like hard, hard techno when I'm, when I'm running in the gym. It's so funny because I look at you and I do not see someone who is like a techno head. Really? So, yeah, yeah it's, no, it's I like it. It's, it's good. It's great. It's great. Um, what about during the week? So, I mean, obviously you guys are sound like you're super hectic and you've got like loads going on. How are you making sure that you are kind of like properly looking after yourself? It was quite difficult when you start your own business, the kind of like cut off point and start point of the day gets very, very blurred. Yeah. Um, especially for the first couple of years, I was really bad at that. So, you know, I found myself at, I don't know, 11 p.m. scrolling through Facebook and Instagram and, you know, was always super yeah, switched on. Yeah, it's, and it's hard to switch off, it's isn't hard, it? Definitely. Mm. Quite bad for your mental health, though. Very, though, very it? bad, yeah. Um, but, you know, now we've got a couple of full-time employees. Uh, there's more of a rhythm and a structure, so it's easier for me to kind of, you know, at 5, 5.30, cut it off. And Where do you see the brand going in the next couple of years and what's your kind of ultimate dream for it? Next couple of years, we definitely want to get some more products in uh, in supermarkets. So we've developed a range of spice blends, the mob blends, yeah, um, mob blend. and that will, those will hopefully be ready in the next few months. I think carry on with the books um, and you know keep to keep on building and expanding the platform. I think our you know my kind of main mission at the moment is to bring mob into the real world. You know, not have such a focus on just you know growing Instagram followers and Facebook followers. And obviously you've got, you've built this sort of like big platform as well, which has been brilliant. But you also, you do a lot of partnerships and you do um, kind of, 
you know, giveaways. But one mm. of the things that you're, um, I saw that you've done recently was the partnership with Calm Zone. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about that. Uh, my mum, you know, suffered from depression while I was growing up. So, um, so it's something that I've grown up with and lived with. And I don't know, getting through university, we had lots of friends who just sort of, it turned out they were feeling depressed right. and they mentioned it after we left and no one had any so no idea. One was talking about this. And that's yeah. the issue. And I think, um, you know, we have this massive student young professional following and I felt this is just, you know, the perfect charity that yeah. we should be partnering Absolutely. with. Someone that, you know, a charity that encourages people to talk about the way that they're feeling. And, um, and yeah, I mean, it's taken a couple of different forms. We did a big giveaway and all, in order to enter, you had to donate two pounds to a just giving page for Calm, and we picked a winner out of the list of donators. Um, and yeah, we're doing a cooking event with them in a couple of weeks. Brilliant. We're cooking with that Dr. Alex from Love Island. Yeah. Oh, no way, really? Yeah, Amazing. so um, so I think we've, I've got a really good relationship with them. So I think, you know, we keep spitballing ideas and um, we'll do different things. How do you manage to look after your sort of mental well-being? Do you have kind of processes that you put in place to help you cope with such a hectic lifestyle? I see a therapist. Brilliant. Um, so, uh, and I think that that is, you know, I found that incredibly helpful. I, for someone who's running a social media business where, you know, there's so much kind of like public, yeah, I don't know, positivity and also some negativity, yeah. I'm so sensitive. Yeah. Um, and so if I see a slightly dodgy comment or, you know, if we do something and it's a bit of a blunder and there's some kind of big PR kickback, I take it very to do heart, you? yeah. How do you deal with that though then? How do you kind of like say, okay, it's okay? I, I don't know, I have a very, very close kind of support network with my friends and my girlfriends and I'm very kind of like open with them and I always feel like talking about and airing it rather than it being something that mm. you kind of just let like wriggle around That's in your true. mind exactly is so important. Um, so I always just think talking to people is key. Um, and then I guess, you know, definitely a relationship with social media is terrible for mental health you know yeah. being too involved in it so i'm try and be strict with myself and you know not check it as much as i you know was right yeah. at the beginning and that kind of thing how do you unwind how do you just switch off from everything yeah, i love just switching off and watching i'm exactly crap. the same like yeah. you don't have to think you just you zone out yeah. and you what know. kind of crap um, well, actually, this isn't crap, but the new <laughs> show that I'm obsessed with is called Street Foods, and it's oh, on Netflix. Ooh, Do you I ever watch Chef's that. Table? Yes. yes. So it's uh, it's produced by the same guys, but they're, the kind of focus is on you know big street food yeah. heroes, and they've started with different uh, cities in Asia, okay. and it's amazing. Really? Okay. Yeah. But in some ways, that kind of is still work for you. Oh uh, no, 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 no! Do you not find that worky? No, I think it's like it's. I, it, it feels. I, it feels quite escapist. You know, you're just zoning into a completely different culture or whatever. I do a lot of cooking, and obviously we've all got like a little bit of a store cupboard. Mm -hmm. If you haven't got anything in, you can't access any kind of food delivery service. What, what you can cooking? you make, literally, out of? Nothing. But hang on, what's in the cupboard here? Yeah. Okay, well, here we go. Right, well, let's so give you I've something. Like, dish do we have, like, sweet corn, tuna, that kind of thing? Ew, this... no, because they're gross. Let's give you some... <laughs> you're like... Let's give you good, some yeah. uh, some uh, risotto rice, some some uh, a, a, a monkey stock cube. Pitch in with some stuff. Oh, um, some, like, um, gravy granules. Oh. <laughs> Come on, everyone's got gravy uh, what else? Right. What else is in the store <laughs> cupboard? Uh, some uh, tin tomatoes. Wow, this sounds dodgy. Oh, um, this is dodgy. Okay, I'm going for a risotto dish. Yeah, there is on. a, do you know what a puttanesca is? Yes. yes. Okay, so this is definitely a little bit of a switch up, but maybe a risotto puttanesca. Mm. So mm. I nice. would. It's tasty. So I would start it going with, uh, going with the risotto and hopefully I've got some oil lying around and then I'd build it up with the gravy granules and the stock cube until you've got a nice creamy risotto. And then I would maybe add a tin of tomatoes. Yeah. Maybe I've got a couple of capers lying Ooh. around and some tinned anchovies. Yeah. This okay. is all kind of store cupboard stuff. Sounds realistic. Yeah, I don't know how good that would actually be. Capers, but... would also, I ever have capers in a my cupboard? Puttanesca, okay, that's like the pasta of the, the whore, isn't it? Exactly. So Slut spaghetti. Slut spaghetti, yeah. yeah. So, so it's tomato, hang on, just for people that don't know if they are listening, it's tomato, capers, it, it, anchovies, garlic. So tomato, capers, anchovy, garlic, and chili flakes okay. are the key bits. And then if you've got parsley, that would be nice, but those are the key bits. And apparently, uh, it's called slut spaghetti because 
they, I, there are two explanations. Either they didn't have much time in between shifts, so they, um, so they had to, I don't know, make a really quick spaghetti ah. dish. Or because it's so spicy, it was almost like a kind of disinfectant. Nice. There's, okay. I did some research That's... into it, and those are two, I don't know. Well, with the two good well, myths there, yes, I like yes, them. Now we know we love to, we love to provide knowledge on <laughs> <laughs> here on Eat, Rave, Rest, Repeat. Um, so I want to ask you what to both of you actually. Yeah. What is your death row meal? Ooh. The last, if the, the last, last meal you're ever gonna have. That is a really, last supper, really what is good it gonna one. be? Um, I know already. And it doesn't have to be cooked in under 10 minutes. Really? Okay. <laughs> yeah, or for under, under 10 minutes. Always, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. always going to be a prawn curry. Wow, nice. How? Like a kind of tomato based or a Thai? I think it would be, it would be in a tomato based, uh, really spicy, Jalfrezi esque, uh, probably a little bit of coconut milk in there. Mm. But like, I'd get like the best chef in the world to cook it for me. Nice. It'd have to come from a really good chef. I mean, I can cook it myself, but I, that's a bit, it's a bit rubbish cooking it and then being like, yeah, yeah. your head. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to put the work in. I just want to eat it. I was going to electrocute you, actually. Oh, what? <laughs> not not, not um, decapitate you. And, and so actually, but starting with, sorry, starting with... Oh, hang on, we didn't, oh, we're not giving you a starter, <laughs> Oh, okay. And, it's uh, main, damn, okay, mains just only. Mains only. Okay, fine. I'm similar to you, but I'm going prawn, red, Thai curry. Okay, that's a good and one. And just like, it doesn't have to be fancy. It's pretty like bog, not bog standard, but it's just like the most comforting thing. And especially yeah, yeah. when when I'm hungover, that's my go to dish. It's just oh, I'm now like regret, regretting my choice. I, I had know. my you can't live your life in regret. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> we were interviewing um, we at the studio. We were interviewing for our new kind of like head cameraman and the guy who actually ended up getting the job. One of the questions was, what was what will your death row meal be? And he said he would have something that was so, so spicy, overbearingly spicy, that you wouldn't necessarily dread dying. Yeah, that's a, that's Which a good point. Which I thought was quite a good idea. So you, 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 you're so in so much pain, yeah. you're like, but actually, you know what, You would be distracted, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. What would yours be, Ben? Mine would be, I think... Um, pasta? Well, <laughs> it actually doesn't have any pasta in it. It is Italian, though. Uh, it's a parmigiana, so kind of lay tomato, aubergine, tomato, aubergine, mozzarella, parmesan on top. It's a kind of baked dish. Yeah. And it was the classic at my dad's Italian restaurant. And yeah, it was my ultimate kind of comfort food. Um, thank you so much for coming on. Thank it's you. Been, it's been a real insight. Yeah, it yeah, has. Yeah. And thank you so much for all of your recipes as well. No and worries. This and this is the book, Mob Veggie. Mob Veggie. 4th of July. And 4th of July. Ben will also be providing some really fun uh, tracks to check out the Spotify playlist. Thanks very much for watching and see we'll you see, you see you next time. See you later.